I just don't think people believe me. This critique of Gary Vaynerchuk begins with a man named Abraham Wald. Abraham Wald was a Hungarian mathematician born in 1902 who graduated from the University of Vienna in 1931 with a PhD in mathematics. During Nazi Germany's annexation of Austria in 1938, Wald and his family were persecuted as Jews, which led to his immigration to the United States of America. During World War II, Wald was a member of the Statistical Research Group at Columbia University where he applied his statistical skills to various wartime problems. The military presented Wald with a problem to solve. We are experiencing a lot of our casualties with our fighter pilots. How can we apply mathematics and sampling inspection to reduce our casualties? The military researched the damage received to their planes returning from conflict. They found that the wings and tail were receiving more damage than the engine. Logically, it would make more sense to better secure the wings and tail since that's where the bullets were hitting, right? Wald realized that this line of thinking was incorrect. We needed to armor the engine since we should be focusing on the planes that weren't returning home to better handle the damage inflicted by bullets not on the planes returning home since those planes proved that they could handle the current bullet damage. This led to the creation of the term survivorship bias. Survivorship bias is the logical error of concentrating on the people or things that made it past some selection process and overlooking those that did not typically because of their lack of visibility. This can lead to false conclusions in several different ways. Here's an example. All successful people who have reached the highest levels of socioeconomic status in society will tell you that they reached their position by working really hard. If working hard is the main criteria for financial success, then why doesn't everyone who works a ridiculous amount of hours become a multimillionaire? There are plenty of people who work multiple jobs and work just as many hours as Gary Vaynerchuk, but will never become wealthy and seen as successful as entrepreneurs. So Gary Vaynerchuk focusing on hustle and hard work as the only elements to success is undermining all of those people who have worked hard for decades and are just getting by. What he's missing is all of the people who did not succeed who worked hard as well. So to me, hustle would be putting all your effort into achieving the goal at hand and for me that means making every minute count. So look, you need a break? Good. Get your break, but the bottom line is every minute that you can apply to your game, you need to. Gary Vaynerchuk's audience is young and aspiring entrepreneurs. He is amazing at grooming his audience into a specific mindset of always focusing on working as you can't beat someone who outworks you. He places work and hustle above all else. My issue is that success doesn't come from hard work only, which he positions as the only thing that matters. Success in business comes from finding the right product or service to offer the market, delivering it in a way that the market will accept and purchase, entering the market at the right time, having the right skill set, and experiencing luck. Let me provide a quick two examples of luck. In the middle of the year 2000, plenty of Enron employees had worked really hard for the company they loved and watched the stock experience a meteoric rise. They invested their hard-earned dollars in the company that employed them. Some even had their entire 401ks with Enron and watched as their entire retirement money evaporated by the end of 2001. Second, many adults worked hard for years to save up money for their first house. They did all of the right things to qualify for a home, including the necessary down payment, cash reserves, solid work history, and low debt. They purchased their home in December 2006, and within 12 months, their nice and new $350,000 house was now only worth $120,000. In both scenarios, hardworking Americans fell victim to unfortunate timing and bad luck, even though they may have worked hard and hustled for years and maybe even decades. Now, back to Gary Vee. Finding your lane is going to be the most important variable to success. This is going to be your unique path to succeeding. Where Gary Vee gets it right is that you should become obsessed with that one path and outwork everyone else. If the timing is right, if you pick the right market, and your customers are ready for your product or service, then you have a chance of succeeding. I'll provide a personal anecdote. I will make four to five times as much money this year as I did last year. Did I work any harder? No. I picked the correct place to invest my money and a couple of investments worked out due to factors outside of my control, such as Las Vegas' massive appreciation, having a friend ready to sell his house hack at the exact same moment I was looking for a new place to move, and a few other factors that I could not control. If you are someone who consumes Gary Vee videos, 
Then realize that his commentary is very applicable when you have found your lane and you're going all in on something that fits you best. You can't hustle your way to success if you're attempting to run a business in something that doesn't fit you or the market doesn't want what you're selling. Hustle is putting it all on the line. Hustle is waking up one day, the day before you die, and realizing you gave it your all into the parenting of your children, the building of your businesses, the philanthropy that you wanted to do. Whatever you define, it's just you know, all in, emotionally and executionally, in theory and strategy and in execution. Obsession is what you will need when you have found what you're going to pursue. Using personal anecdotes, I have seen some wild amounts of success within real estate investing, and everyone who experiences this level of success is obsessed with their business. Obsession. Seems yeah. pretty simple to me. Gary V preaches about obsessing about achieving what you want, whatever the cost, and I think this is gold advice. What Gary V provides to the market is the constant injection of a motivating mindset shift to help you keep pushing when you're feeling down. This is why his content has blown up over the past few years. Whenever you need to pick me up, his content enters into your veins like a hit of heroin. You know, do I believe that hard work is an essential part of the kind of success that people define? I do. Do I think working so many hours that it burns you out that you need to retire or quit or you're unhappy in perpetuity is bad? Of course I do. I think this is a self-awareness game and actually I think it's a much more interesting game of like do you know why you're working or what are you trying to achieve? I would go crazy sitting on a farm in middle America or doing 28 weeks of vacation. It's not what makes me happy, but I unbelievably am happy for the people that makes it happy. I love the process of building something the way I want to build it. I would go crazy having all people working remotely the way 37 Signals does. They would go crazy managing a thousand people under a roof. I think it's about self-awareness. Self-awareness is key to the hard work. To validate my point, self-awareness will help guide your ambition and energy. What he gets right is his constant preaching of your need to be self-aware of what you are good at. When you find what you are good at, then you can apply his preachings of hustle, hard work, and non-stop obsession. I think you can maximize your talent. Like, I feel like I have a certain amount of you know, basketball talent in my body. Sure, I can play every day, but can I really get to that extreme level where I could be on a basketball card, just punchline, the answer is no. His self-awareness, in my opinion, is one of his most valuable traits and something that I'm very happy he alludes to in nearly half of his videos. He presents hustling as the means to end suffering, but hustling in and of itself is nothing. You may be stuck on a treadmill to mediocrity or failure if you select the wrong path to take and the wrong venture to pursue which may lead to more discontent than when you first began. The point I'm trying to make is that it's important that you figure out what you're good at and what the market needs and then focus on hustling like he preaches. I want everyone to keep in mind that he has the ability to hustle 16 or more hours a day because his job is mostly spending time giving speeches, talking about himself in interviews, answering phone calls, and answering people on social media. He classifies this as work, but everyone watching this video could have this schedule and work 16 hours a day. Example, I work in software development. You simply cannot write computer code for 16 hours a day, all day, every day. You can have all the motivation in the world, but mentally demanding jobs have a time limit on how much you can actually produce in a single day or in a week. So I say that so that you don't get the FOMO feeling when watching his videos that you aren't hustling enough. His videos are meant to motivate, not to be taken as practical advice. He's living his life on his specific path. You are living life on your path. Thanks for watching.